Okay, so more stuff in relations to Warner Brothers. I know it seems like I've been talking about them a lot, but it's because they've been making a lot of moves. And again, I will continue to emphasize this. This is all because AT&T owns them now and is in the process of restructuring or making demands about what they expect of Warner Brothers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, none of these, I, I very firmly believe none of these are moves that they would have made if they did not have AT&T, their new corporate overlord, breathing down their neck. I, I believe that very firmly. And I will not stop bringing it up because corporate consolidation is horrible. Uh, in any case, the latest thing is apparently... Uh, they are now. They have. Uh, they have said now that they are going to put out six DC-related movies per year. Now, there's a slight asterisk on that because uh, they are presuming eventually the theaters opening up again, and they are not all intended for theatrical release. Their plan is to have. Four of those six be for theatrical release and two be developed with streaming in mind, which honestly, if you're going to have stuff go to the streaming platform, you should have that be the plan from the outset so that you budget accordingly to a streaming platform um, because you can't expect the same level of returns and they're kind of indirect since it's subscriptions and, and all the rest of that. So that's a, if they're going to split between the two, they should know going in wh which ones are going to which. And that and that is separate and on top of the various spinoffs that they're looking into for HBO Max, like like, for example, the Peacemaker um, series that is going to come out as a spinoff of James Gunn's upcoming Suicide Squad movies. So this six movies a year is separate from any possible spinoff material. So for context, in terms of how many that is, even if we just look at four theatrical and disregard the two uh, going to streaming, the most that the Marvel Cinematic Universe has put out in the same year is three. They did that in 2019, 18, and 17. They had three MCU movies per year. Prior to that, they never went more than two. They had some years where there was only one. In 2009, there weren't any. My point being that Warner Brothers is... This feels very much like repeating previous mistakes, all right? And I'll I'll explain all that. And like, look, when I say mistakes, I mean mistakes in approach and how they are going about even looking at this as a prospect and as a project. Regardless of what you think about the quality of the films made under the DC umbrella so far, there have been a lot of stumbles for, by any measure. So this feels like repeating the past because... Just like when they tried to rush into their big team up leading into Justice League because they desperately felt the need to catch up to Avengers, which spent several years and three franchises, four franchises, building up towards the Avengers film... Warner Brothers tried to leap ahead and do just as well, do Batman v Superman, combine their two most uh, iconic characters, introduce Wonder Woman, and then get them into their Justice League. They tried to rush the process that Marvel was able to take its time and build towards. And it feels like that again. They're trying to leap to a point where audiences want four DC-related theatrical films a year when Marvel doesn't even put that many out and they took their time even getting up to three a year. This is such a classic corporate mentality mistake. Looking at the business model of a rival or similarly based company going, huh, they make all their money off these big team up things and releasing numerous ones per year. Well, we can just start doing that. No, you can't, because the reason the other company is able to do it is because they built up to that. You can't just go, here's a whole bunch of DC characters if you have not built the trust with the audience that they are going to want to see them. You don't get to jump to dessert. 
which is what DC is doing. DC Films and Warner Brothers are doing again. Not only does this feel like a repeat of trying to leap to Justice League as fast as humanly possible, does anyone else remember their five-year plan that was announced after Man of Steel, where they announced Batman v Superman and Wonder Woman and Justice League and Cyborg and Flash and Green Lantern? Most of which have yet to emerge in any way, shape, or form. Making plans this far-reaching, and more to the point, announcing them publicly... That is a big gamble because if they blow it again, and I will say if, who knows, but if they blow it again, they're going to be on their second instance of us being able to look back at, well, you said you were going to do this and now clearly you're not. Something went wrong. <sighs> I'm not necessarily going to fault them. Well, I will a little bit, but I'm not going to fault them that much for having the goal of four theatrical films, six total films per year. But announcing that publicly, making, making everyone know, that is just going to highlight how much they might potentially fall short if they don't get there. Or if they rush to get there, it only happens for one year, then they have to restructure everything again. And again, the only reason to do this, and especially the only reason to announce it, is to please shareholders, which they have to do for AT&T. That's not to say Time Warner and Warner Brothers didn't have its own shareholders before, but they are now they are now under the grip of a larger company that can just start dismantling them if they're unhappy. And you do what you have to to please the owners, which means they have to please AT&T to therefore please AT&T shareholders. This is... Again, I'm not going to say there's no possible way this works. This is a huge gamble, and I personally think a big mistake and frustrating because it is a repeat of mistakes they have made before. Now, a couple of other little details about this. Apparently, they're fast-tracking Wonder Woman 3. It's not currently clear how that's going to fit, given that Patty Jenkins is working on Rogue Squadron for um, Lucasfilm. They have indicated that they want her back for three. Now, it's possible that, uh, because it's what I was able to dig up on Rogue Squadron is the treatments pretty much, they don't necessarily have a shooting script, but like there's not intended to be a long pre-production development on that. Like she had a pitch, she has a treatment, it's been approved, that is moving forward quickly. So it is feasible if Patty Jenkins is willing to do it, that she could start pre-production on the next Wonder Woman uh, while doing post-production for Rogue Squadron. But again, that's really, that is heavily dependent on her willingness to do it and everything lining up and nothing going wonky. Because if something happens that delays Rogue Squadron, there's going to be a domino effect on this. So that's one thing. So they fast-tracked that. We haven't gotten a ton of new announcements in terms of what these theoretical six are going to be. Oh, and they're looking at 2022 to start hitting this. Um, or at least that, that was the date that I found. But that is their goal. And that is, uh, that's quick. That's quick to try and get to that position. And also remember, they are trying to do this at a time at which Warner Brothers is in damage control with its standing within the Hollywood creative community because they ticked off a lot of people with their whole, we're putting the entire 2021 Warner Brothers slate onto HBO Max. And some of that might even get backtracked. Uh, there seems to be some negotiations going on around Dune that that might in fact go back to being theatrically exclusive, but they're in damage control on that. And while they're in damage control with a lot of other studios and directors and talent ticked off at them... They're trying to assemble teams to start having six movies per year coming out in only a couple of years. Maybe it was 2023, but like not it, it, like they need to start pulling this together now. And they're not in great standing in the industry at the moment. So there's another complication. There is absolutely no indication that any of these projects are intended to branch off from the Snyder Cut. There will be... Now, that's not to say that it may never happen. 
but there was an executive who wasn't named, which means that this was uh, this was not a statement they were prepared to make um, with their name attached to it. But it was reported that a Warner Brothers executive basically said that the Snyder Cut is a narrative cul-de-sac. The, it's a dead end street. They do not intend to have it branch off into other things. Does that mean definitively that they won't? No, maybe they still will. But the indication right now is that that's not the plan. That's not what they're building this six movies a year around. Is the is however they're building it, and we don't know exactly how. It's not around the idea of doing it through the Snyderverse. Now, that having been said, they are probably going to lean heavily on the fact that they've kind of thrown their hands up and gone to heck with continuity. And everything is... I don't doubt that when, if the Flash movie ever happens, it will somehow be a multiverse justification to, I guess, to placate the people who get uppity about continuity or who wanted a more cohesive cinematic universe. Honestly, I think they'd be better off just not addressing it. It's very clear to me that they're not going to try and build a single cohesive universe because jumping to six movies a year when your thing has been this disjointed up to this point, no, 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 no. I don't care who you got uh, to try and run this thing. It's not, they're not going to be able to pull all that together and have it be consistent. The only way you're going to get that many things done on the schedule that they are trying to get it done is to have them work in a bubble and not worry about how it ties into other stuff. Now, that might even have been a selling point at one point that, you know, oh, is the MCU getting too big, too complicated? Are you feeling obligated to see these movies that, or these these streaming shows that you didn't have an interest in just so that you can keep up? Well... Come on over to DC where the franchises are self-contained and you don't have to have seen a bunch of... You don't have to have seen Justice League or Batman v Superman or the Wonder Woman movies to enjoy our new The Batman. That might have theoretically been a selling point. Unfortunately, uh, the MCU is now moving towards a multiverse thing with... Well, with the Doctor Strange thing literally being titled Multiverse of Madness and other things indicating that they're headed that direction. Now, MCU is probably still going to have those things interweave, but depending on how they execute that, it might actually rob Warner Brothers of one of the theoretical unique selling points to the superhero movies that they put out. I don't know. There's a little bit of speculation on my part with this, but just based on the announcement... Six movies a year, four going to theaters, and l- trying to leap to that kind of production schedule. The first year that MCU movies came out, there were two. Then we had a year with none. Then it was one. And then we had a bunch with two. And then we only had three years that had three. They never jumped up to four. And DC, Warner Brothers, are leaping immediately to four a year. That is a lot of product that you are putting out there on what you assume the demand is. The much smarter long-term thing would be to build up to that kind of demand, to build up to the point where people go, yes, we want four movies a year from these from this studio about these characters. But they're, again, I said it, they're trying to jump to dessert. And they haven't, They haven't had a lot of luck doing that before, and this feels like an even bigger leap than following up Man of Steel with a team-up and then trying to rush to uh, Justice League as fast as possible. This feels like an even bigger leap forward and skipping even more steps. (sighs) Look, I know I bash on Warner Brothers. It's not because I want to. I want them to make good movies, especially around their superhero stuff. They have some of the best superhero IP out there. I don't want it to be bad. I don't want them to screw it up. So when I say I think they're making a mistake, I say that with no joy, with no sense of schadenfreude. I don't want this to be a mistake, but it looks like a mistake to me. A big one. And... This is the kind of thing that happens with corporate consolidation. 
to please the new owners, a company does things that it's not prepared to do, fails at them because they weren't prepared, but they had to try, and then they get gutted. They get trimmed down. They get sold off. They get liquidated. And I don't expect like a full liquidation to happen to Warner Brothers, but over the next few years, I dread that we are going to watch them as a company set up bigger and bigger hurdles for themselves in an attempt to try and make themselves look good to AT&T, fail to clear those hurdles, and it's going to keep reshaping the company in a bad way. And I take no pleasure in that. Warner Brothers, DC Movies, leaping ahead again. What do you think about all this? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Like, share, subscribe. I have a Patreon. That is what pays my bills and actually uh, enables me to do this job at all uh, at this point. If you are able to lend assistance in any amount, I would greatly appreciate it. But also, no pressure because we take a relaxed attitude around here. So you can just come on back next time you need a break.